Well, actually, multi-stage carcinogenesis as a concept came from uh, studies in mainly in animals, you know, decades ago, you know, in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, it was first shown by uh, treating um, rabbits and mice with extracts of coal tar, <coughs> that these, these animals could develop lesions on the skin. And if you observe these lesions, um, then they get lots of benign lesions, and some of these benign lesions would progress to malignancy. They'd become more invasive. Then they would spread to different body sites and metastasize. So that concept of um, stepwise progression came largely from animal models you know, many years ago. And now we know that similar kinds of things do occur in humans. So in the colon, for example, um, colon tumors are initiated within single cells. Um, but that single cell can then um, grow into a benign lesion. And occasionally that benign lesion can progress to malignancy. So <coughs> we, we have developed this comforting sort of linear model of multistage carcinogenesis uh, based on what I've just said that you know there's clonal initiation proliferation selection of something that can make a benign tumor further selection of something that can make a malignant tumor and metastasize so this is the model but it's increasingly obvious that there are major components of that model that are not correct um, that at any of these stages um, there can be deviations from this standard pattern. So we know, for example, from uh, mouse models that the initiating event, the clonal event that starts the whole process off, can occur in different cells within a tissue. And uh, as uh, I'm sure you know, tissues are, uh, all tissues have stem cells, and uh, those stem cells can uh, regenerate the tissue when it's wounded um, and it, it can make a big difference if the initiating cancer mutation occurs within a stem cell or within a cell that has gone out of the stem cell pool and is now part of the differentiating cell population within the tissue. So uh, if the initiation occurs later on you can still get a benign type of tumour but that's, you know, the model that's come from the, from, the, from the mouse models is that that type of lesion is more terminally benign and it's very unlikely to become malignant. So you have two types of malignant, of uh, pre-malignant tumors or benign tumors, um, some of which have a high probability of becoming malignant, others are like dead ends. And we don't know how many of these there are in humans. So in humans, we can see colonic polyps, for example. But uh, do we know that the colonic polyp that we can detect by a colonoscopy is actually one that would have progressed or is it one that you could just safely leave there? That's the big question that we don't understand. Similarly, in lung, human lung cancer, uh, we can do CT scans, which are quite expensive, and those will detect lots of lesions in the lung. But the clinicians are faced with the problem of what do I do if I find these lesions? because to go into the lung and remove the lesion is major surgery. And in the majority of cases, it may well not be necessary to remove that lesion. So the, so the comforting model of multistage carcinogenesis doesn't help us here. We really have to go back and identify the, the specific nature of these pre-malignant lesions and you know, pick out the dangerous ones from the more indolent ones and try and um, use those for um, uh, developing a more you know, comprehensive healthcare policy because to screen everybody with these very expensive scans sucks up too much of the money that's available for healthcare. We can't do it for everybody. We have to identify the susceptible individuals.